Hey there comic fam, welcome back to Climbing Comics. In today's sesh we'll be talking about the first appearance of Black Panther. Hey there again comic fam, welcome back to Climbing Comics. In today's sesh we'll be talking about the first appearance of Black Panther. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this book in particular is because I've been wanting to obtain uh, Fantastic Four number 52, right? Um, ever since the movie came out a couple of years ago, and unfortunately by the passing of uh, the great actor uh, Chadwick Boseman, um, I think I wanted to um, read this book and kind of understand the history of where the story was written back then in terms of what was going on in the world versus where it is now. Because I, I know with the remakes of a lot of these stories in Marvel, I think they, they kind of uh, bring it to the forefront of what's happening um, in in life today. So I, I think it's it's a really good comic because it mixes in with uh, what's coming out in the MCU. And I, I really like this book, right? All right, so let's start off. I'll, I'll start off a little bit with, with the story and give a little bit of background throughout um, throughout the way. So this came out, I believe, in July 1966. Um by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. So those two obviously came out with a, a ton of characters. But um, yeah, this one was a really cool story. It it actually is a, a mix of like 52 and 53. But today I'll talk about mainly about uh, number 52. Um, unlike other story um, first appearances, uh, Black Panther's first appearance was an entire book essentially, right? It wasn't just a, a panel or two. In, in a book, it was like literally his whole book, right? So starting off, you see the Fantastic Four minus Johnny Storm. So uh, Sue Richards and um, Mr. Fantastic and the thing just flying around in this in this plane like thing. And then so you find out that this is actually a gift from um, the chieftain of Wakanda. So uh, T'Challa. So what they're doing is they're flying around. Um, Reed Richards is figuring out that hey, this is a really cool, this is a really cool, um, like flying aircraft, um, and it's like really easy to use. They kind of actually compare it to to using a telephone, but they're heading to the Baxter Building. They go to the Baxter Building, and um, one of the emissaries of uh, the chieftain of Wakanda is there and says, "Hey, uh, Mr. Richards, if you want to keep this as a gift." Um, I think all our chieftain uh, T'Challa asks for you to do is to come to Wakanda and join in and there will be a hunt um, that it will be there to commemorate, commemorate their coming over. And so he's like, all right, let's do this. So they swing by uh, Johnny Storm's college. Johnny Storm is, is studying and his roommate, um, this guy named Wyatt Wingfoot, is just sleeping. And, um, you know, they tussle around between the thing and... and um, and the human torch, Johnny Storm. And they're like, Johnny's like, hey, can I bring my friend? And he's like, all right. So they bring his friend, um, Wyatt Wingfoot, and they go into that ship that was given by T'Challa that's like very futuristic, has lots of the uh, the bells and whistles, technology that Reed hasn't even seen yet. The emissary's flying. And the way that they make it, it's it's like... Just like the movie where you see the canopy of like a rainforest jungle type place and then you're flying through the canopy and it was just like all a facade because once you enter inside, everything inside is is essentially like a, how do I, this is very Kirby-esque, right? All the machinery, all of the vines, all of the trees are essentially like machines. So it was is really cool that um, they kind of mixed together. Um, some of the things that you would see in the movie to uh, what they have in, in the comic book itself. The comic book itself was like essentially a bunch of um, a bunch of machinery, uh, a lot of power. Everything's powered, and like the Fantastic Four were really surprised throughout this whole thing. The thing is like m making like kind of off-color comments uh, about it all, but um, it, I guess it's just a sign of the times. But um, they go in, uh, they land. And the chiefman, chieftain's emissary lands, and then he disappears. And then so what you find out, essentially, is um, they are there for a hunt, but they found out that they are the ones being hunted, right? The Fantastic Four are the ones being hunted. 
So you see the emissary kind of go down this elevator, and then at that same time, you see the thing try to chase him and grab grab onto whatever elevator was on, but the thing gets zapped and he loses some of his power. So you essentially find out that um, Black Panther is essentially, I guess this is a comic trope. Um, in order for Black Panther to to figure out how strong he is compared to all of the other all of the other um, super powered uh, people in the Marvel universe, it, he wants to compare himself and kind of fight against um, the Fantastic Four. And if he could beat the Fantastic Four, he could beat any anyone. And then in Fantastic Four number fifty three, you want you'll see like who he wants to beat essentially. So he takes out the thing. Uh, because he understands the thing will just like kind of um, turn off his like you know thinking brain and just attack, and then next he um, knows that the Human Torch is essentially gonna try to attack him again too. So he leads him to like this like little room, and then um, he kind of dodges as the Flash flies into this room. It's this Abestos room, and then they kind of smash him and kind of like kind of um, deflame the Human Torch. So the room closes, and that room goes underneath ground. So he's taking care of the thing and um, the human torch. So all the people that are left are Mr. Fantastic, um, Invisible Woman, and White Wingfoot, right? So the thing is still hanging out with them. And then so you see some of um, um, Black Panther's um, army kind of shoot these three or four with like this ray gun that kind of um, makes it so that they can't stay together right so they try to stay together to come up with a plan because they knew that hey we're in this person's um kind of area they have the advantage so let's try to come up with a plan but because of this this gun that they were shot with they're kind of like um, repelled from each other so they like kind of fly away from each other right so this way black panther could isolate and divide and conquer essentially first up is Invisible Woman. So Invisible Woman goes invisible, and then um, you you see Black Panther there, and then he he realizes that she's standing next to some something that's like vibrating, so he can't so much hear her footsteps. But you know, all of his heightens are sent, uh, are all of his senses are heightened, right? So he's able to uh, use his um, scent to her scent to find her, right? So as as he tries to like um, approach her, she has to become visible again in order to create like a shield, right? But he knows this. So what happens is she becomes visible. And then before she can make the shield around her, um, Black Panther jumps into the area of where the shield would be. Um, he's done his research. He's, he's, he's essentially like at this point, like the Batman of the Marvel Universe where he plans and he knows at, like all of the... Um, all of the strengths and weaknesses of his uh, enemies, right? So once he's in that bubble, he essentially kind of gives that sleeping glass spray out of his out of his claws and then she falls asleep. So now she's taken down. So next you have to um, he has to take on uh, Mr. Fantastic, right? So in the background, you see White Wingfoot is like, all right, I need to do something to help the Fantastic Four. So essentially, he's running around scouting for for um, the telecommunications or the communication station of Black Panther, and he finds it. And then so there's a couple people there. They have a couple monitors. They're they're viewing uh, Mr. Fantastic, the Thing, um, Invisible Woman, and figuring out where things are. And they're kind of relaying info to Black Panther. Because of this, um, he's like, "All right, let me give them an advantage." So he attacks this communication station, takes them all down. So um, in the meanwhile, you see, you cut back to uh, Mr. Fantastic fighting Black Panther. He knows that Mr. Fantact Fantastic is, is really intelligent. He understands and he plans. So he tries to throw him off by turning off the lights, right? So the Mr. Fantastic is like kind of stretching, trying to figure out where he is. But by the time Black Panther like jumps around and avoids his arms and then turns on the light, you see this titanium um, kind of handcuff around uh, Reed Richards arms right at the same time because White Wingfoot kind of um, dis disabled the communication station he was also able to find uh, where Johnny Storm was it's very <laughs> he's very interesting right he's walking around and he's like the ground feels kind of warm here and it's like warm and then cool and then warm and then cool 
Johnny Storm must be underneath here. So he frees Johnny Storm. Johnny Storm frees um, Invisible Woman or wakes her up. And then by that time, the thing is back to full strength. And then so at that point, they all kind of converge and um, save Mr. Fantastic from his handcuffs. And they all kind of start um, cornering Black Panther. And they're like, we're all here, Black Panther. You can't beat us all. We are now like able to um, be at full strength. And the one thing is, which is really cool, but also kind of funny, is that Black Panther, even though the Fantastic Four are considered really strong, he did not take into account the unpowered person, Wyatt Wingfoot, that came in and kind of helped them all. So at the end of this, you see him give up. He takes off his mask and he's like, all right, now that, um, now that we have completed the hunt, um, I am T'Challa, the, the son of T'Chaka, and I have taken on the mantle of Black Panther. Let me tell you the story of how I came to be. And essentially, that's it. So um, the next issue is called The Reason Why. So it, it was actually a pretty fun little book to read and where you kind of realize that there are lots of comparisons, right? So um, you have the technologically advanced Black Panther with, um, with, I guess at this point, they haven't talked yet about vibranium. Um, that comes later on, but he's essentially like one of, could be one of the richest people in the Marvel universe at this time. He's very intelligent. He has a lot of resources, hence uh, that callback to to Batman and Bruce Wayne and um, having that, um, you know, that knowledge of your enemies. So at this time, it's it's kind of cool how Wyatt Wingfoot, this random college student that was Johnny Storm's roommate, came in to help save the day. He was that, that crux that, that kind of uh, got things going. So essentially, at the end of this book, when I, when I read this, I, I asked myself, is this a book I, I want to have? And reading it, I thought it was a pretty cool book. Pretty, pretty cool book, right? So I know this is um, probably a two to three issue story arc. Obviously, 53, 54, like continue the story to show how uh, T'Challa got uh, the mantle of Black Panther and his enemy, the Claw. Um, and so, you know, we could talk, we'll talk about that in one of our future episodes. But I think this book um, showing the history of Black Panther in terms of like what's going on with uh, Wakanda and how they're technologically advanced, the just the, you know, just the like the precursor to him explaining like how he um, pulled. Uh, how he obtained the mantle of Black Panther, I think is a, is a really cool book to, to kind of set things up for the future, right? So it's one of the books I would definitely love in the future to have in, in my collection. You know, it may not fit right now, but after reading it, I would have no, no doubt that um, I would be so happy to have that, um, you know, like, you know, if it's slabbed on my wall and just be able to read it again. So it, it's one of the books that I've read actually multiple times just because it's a it's a fun, cool story. But um, I do definitely need to read 53 and 54 um, a couple more times again just to, like, get the whole thing going. So I think for me, there's a lot of Black Panther um, comics coming out right now. There's a lot of cool art. There's the negative space art that's going out right now. Um and the new movie, which will be coming out in, I think, a couple years. So having this book it would be a, a pretty cool place, a pretty cool thing to have when, um, you know, those those new movies come out. Because I'm sure they'll bring in new characters. They'll bring in um, a lot of, like, aspects to the comics back into the movies. So I think one of the things I'll, I'll bring up next time is how they update certain comics from where they were in the 60s to where things are today in terms of what's going on in the world, in terms of technology, in terms of, um, you know, all the characters and their backgrounds. So essentially, um, from um, let, let, let's end this in, in a pretty cool way because um, I think from, from the movie and, and from the book, um, from my comic journey to yours, Wakanda forever. Thanks all. Bye.
One of the cool things that I'll also bring up from reading these comics that came from the 1960s is that a lot of the commentary during that time, we actually have an opportunity to read what、um, readers had sent in in terms of letters. So in the last two pages, there's something called the Fantastic Four fan page. And I'll talk about a little bit about two of the comments that were sent in for Stanley, Steve Ditko, and everyone in the bullpen. So the first one was pretty funny. It was、um, essentially complaining about how expensive subscriptions were, right?、Um, I think they were like, what, $175. So I think、uh, Stan's response is like, don't worry.、Um, we wanted you to get fresh air anyway. So please just go out to the store and buy the books. You don't even have to、um, subscribe. We can't even get the answer from the other people in the company. So that's Stan's,、uh, Stan's response to, to this as well. A second one was it's funny how people give commentary to how books are written. Some guy essentially said,、um, There are more exclamation marks in this one issue than there are in the Bible, in the book War and Peace, and the、uh, book Madame Bovary combined. And he actually lists out 473 exclamation marks. I don't know, and I haven't counted、um, if this is actually real, but、um, it's kind of funny how you have a lot of people respond to that. So Stan's response was, wow, exclamation mark, yup, exclamation mark, it sure is, exclamation mark, and zowie, exclamation mark. So there are a ton of other letters and, and pieces of feedback. To Stan and N group, but、um, these two were, were the most fun that I've read for this issue. So,、um, hopefully, there's a little bit of tidbit、um, of, of information for you. It's kind of cool because throughout like, all of the responses, everyone calls issues ishes. They, they call them ishes. It's, it's pretty fun.、Um, all these little tidbits are, are one of the things that、um, I want to bring to you because they're fun for me to find out. So、um, hopefully, you enjoy them as well. Thanks, all. <laughs>